and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. I'm Callie and today up on the tabletop we have Maiden's Quest designed by Ken Shannon. Maiden's Quest is a card game for one to two players, it takes about 20 minutes to play each game and is for ages 14 and up. This card game is sort of a mostly solo play game with some uh, interactivity and multiplayer compatibility with it and you are a maiden trying to escape the tower and defeat your captor. Let's see what you get in the box. In Maiden's Quest you're going to get 160 cards that you see here and first you're actually going to build your own deck. You're going to start with your main character princess, add Maiden, add a special dress that you're going to use as a special item, you're going to have certain attributes you're going to add, and certain uh, items that you're going to encounter, as well as here we have some uh, possible friends or frenemies that could help you, some treasure, some monsters that you're going to be defeating, and your final boss or captor that you're trying to escape. Uh, it also gives you enough of the tower levels and cheat sheet cards here for two players. So there's enough cards in the deck to do two decks at once. I started with the demo deck so we can see how some of the cards and gameplay works. So here uh, in my hand is my entire deck. The demo deck just has, has fewer cards to start with to see how the game works. And we've come across a goblin here, which uh, we are on the first level. So we're going to have to either fight it or run away. Uh, let's try to fight it. We'll see he, down here we have uh, what we need to defeat the goblin and down here what will happen to us if we fail. So we need any three of these icons, uh, the swords or the cunning, and if we fail we're going to have to uh, destroy one item. So in order to fight the goblin I'm going to fan out five cards. One, two, three, four, five, and then down here we see the rest of my hand that's down the hall and so goblin we need any three of these icons I actually only have one sword icon however I also have this plus one card so I can use that ability to add a card here to my fan and now I have one two three swords and I can defeat the goblin so to defeat the goblin I just turn it over and what I get here is the ability to upgrade one of my cards. So these are, you know, all of my abilities and items that I have. And I can just flip one around. And now it's going to give me some other special, usually additional special abilities here on the gold side. If I were to have needed to destroy something, then I would flip it around to the other side. And ooh, that's a broken one. Nothing happened in there. So now that I've defeated the goblin, go to the back of my deck. This is called cellaring and continue on throughout the deck fighting these um, monsters and leveling up when you get to uh, the rest point. That's when you're going to go up a level in the tower or, or down if you think of it going into a basement and shuffle and then shuffle and restart your entire deck. That's a little bit about how you play Maiden's Quest. I really enjoyed Maiden's Quest. It's a unique card game in that you can kind of take it with you anywhere. You saw I had it in the deck in the palm of my hands. Uh, I played it while I was watching TV it, during the commercials, just playing it by myself. There's also certain rules where you can play with other players. So you start out actually really, it is primarily a solo game I would say because you do start out playing the game by yourself. You can't even have the solo play until you're up a couple of levels. And then um, Michael and I were able to interact and help each other out <laughs> in uh, sharing resources, which makes one of the hesitations I have about the game a little bit better in that when you're building the deck, there is a little bit of luck involved into how balanced your deck is going to be as far as what icons you're going to get and what monsters, what monster icons there are going to be that you're going to need in order to defeat those monsters. I like the demo deck because it started you with those certain numbers that you need, all the, 
all of the cards are numbered. It was really easy to set up the demo deck. However, it's not a full beginner game demo deck, which I think would have been really useful to include uh, in the rules. Just a list of all the cards that you could use to create that first deck and make it a, a better and more balanced experience, at least for the first game. You could even add a couple of more uh, additional starter decks just by listing out all the numbers of the cards that you would put in there. And I think that would make it a better learning experience in the beginning, when, especially if you're playing only solo and not uh, cooperatively with other people where you may just not be able to get those icons that you need. But I really love the theme. The fantasy theme is a favorite of mine. I love being a, a maiden, which you don't always get to be in even some of the fantasy board games. And the maidens had various degrees of like uh, toughness and different abilities. So some of them are more cunning, some of them are stronger, some of them are more uh, char charismatic, and they kind of use that to their advantage, which I think shows a little bit more well-rounded characters that you could be uh, throughout the game, which is really fun, especially, you know, having a game that features girls and their dresses are their superpowers. <laughs> and some of the items are really great, so we had some things that you might find that would, that are fun, like fairy wings, a sword, very basic fantasy thing, right? The bunny slippers, cute but fun, but also things that you might just find in as you're going through a tower, like a candlestick, and you're going to be resourceful and use that as a weapon, which I thought was pretty unique and interesting. Uh, here's a couple of the 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 gowns that you get to use. I like how the unicorn, the rainbow unicorn there is the wild card that you could use for anything. Very powerful. Highly recommend starting with this card in your deck when you're playing your first game, the classic gown there. Very helpful. Uh, and then we also had some abilities. So the traits that you get to use as your character can include, like I said, different things like charisma and toughness and cunning, uh, different different things rather than just in the typical fantasy you think, okay, you have either your, your strong swordsman or your magic user or a ranger or something. It's kind of limited to those abilities. This one is not so much about your fighting abilities, but your uh, potential to be to be smart and cunning as well. And it makes sense for the strategic gameplay. I would say one thing about the cards, I liked how how thin they are. They could hold them in your hand pretty easily, fan out a bunch of them. As you can see, sometimes when you get those plus one icons, you have to fan out quite a bit of quite a few cards in your hand. But because they are skinnier, you can do that with these. However, it really doesn't work to sleeve the cards because you'll have to turn them upside down and shuffle them and keep them in the right order, which can be a little tough with sleeves, even if you have you know, some clear sleeves and they're not the standard card size, which could be hard to find sleeves. You can see some of my cards are already a little bit uh, worn around the edges. <clears throat> so I think it would be good to invest in uh, better cards or or have some sort of sleeving system for these cards. I think overall, I think there's a lot of potential for this mechanic. I'm really excited designer Ken Shannon came up with this. I think it's really unique and I have a feeling other people are going to be able to build on it. Maybe Ken will be able to build on it as well and really add some more interesting elements and I'm excited to see what people come up with, with this kind of new way of playing in a solo game that you could take with you wherever you go. Uh, also just incorporates, you know, some great female power there as well. Uh, there's also some legacy cards, which was a unique uh, element that, that he added, which is really cool. So you can see we have, I signed here when um, Michael and I were able to use the Alliance Wreath together and that's going to make the card more powerful the next time you can choose to add it to your deck. So there's some fun stuff in there and I can't wait to see what else you could do with you know an expansion on these or a new version of this game. So that's my review of Maiden's Quest by Ken Shannon published by WizKids. I hope you all enjoyed it. 
This is Callie Wright from Unfiltered Gamer. Make sure you check us out, subscribe with the button below, like the video, comment what you think. If you're gonna get this game for uh, maybe your favorite young girl gamer this Christmas, uh, let me know. I'd love to hear how, what they think about it, what a younger player would think about this. And as always, look forward to seeing you next time.